We are back, as promised every week. We're not going anywhere inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Vince LaRosa, Max Bredos. Hello, Vince. How was your weekend? My weekend was great. You watched the Oscars? I did watch the Oscars. We had the whole little, thing? We had a little chat about this. Not the whole thing. I couldn't watch the whole thing. I mean, it's not. You couldn't. It was impossible to watch the whole thing. We both It agreed. wasn't there for en- our entertainment value, which is fine. Yeah, and it's making me seem older than I am, but I do agree with you. I miss Billy Crystal. The Billy Crystal. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say. That would be such a ju- juxtaposition if from last, this year, they bring Billy Crystal back and he's doing the song and dances like, The Godfather 3. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, that's not going to happen. And everyone's like, what? We're, <laughs> we're very stoic here today. It was. It, uh, we already talked about it. The lighting was kind of weird. It was good that it was at Union Station. You know, Union Station, an incredible place in L.A. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go check it out and see it, you get a taste of L.A. history, but they had it set up there. I did enjoy that. And, uh, I, you know, you watch it. My wife and that, we watch it. She sees it for the fashion. But you didn't really get much fashion. You got some. Yeah. Because you didn't have the red carpet. Everything was very diffused. Do you know what I was really into? And maybe it's because I watched that... Um... Uh, floral arrangement show on HBO, the competition show. Interesting. I thought the centerpieces and the flowers and all that were really great. It's something that wow. oddly struck me. I don't know. I don't know why I'm this way, but I, I found them to be uh, very beautiful, yeah. and I enjoyed that. So that was my style was the floral arrangements. Wow, I didn't know that. Well, I'm going to go for you when we need some uh, some floral arrangements. Well, I'm not saying I'm good at it. I just like it. Do you like uh, those arrangements where they have the fruit? Like, Oh, no. That's <laughs> that a, looks like that's a floral a scam. arrangement? Yeah, Everyone. someone got that for me once, and I, I try to eat as much fruit, and I go, I can't eat another piece of watermelon. Yeah, how does that still exist? It, it literally is the modern-day fruitcake. Yes, no. no. No melon. I actually have stopped eating fruit by and large. I've doubled up on vegetables. You look like sweet it. Tooth. You look like it. I'll drink a juice by eating fruit. Uh, the, Jason there, says our podcast is not good because we're talking about edible arrangements. Okay, edible arrangements. Maybe we're just trying to get a uh, sponsor. If you send me an edible arrangement, I shall eat it, or I'll try to. Don't get me a large one because I can eat so much fruit. Uh, one one thing I'm not buying about the Oscars, uh, lady won best, was it, screen, adapted screenplay came on. She goes, I didn't prepare, a, I didn't prepare a uh, script. I didn't think I was gonna win. I'm not buying that. All and right. then she went on and talked for like five minutes, thanking everyone because you're gonna remember. Go write a script, and if you don't win, laminate that script and put it on, and you put it on your wall, and you have an incredible conversation piece. You go, well, that was the year I was nominated. I wrote a script and I didn't. Like, oh my god, that's so charming. That belongs in a museum. Never believe a writer when they say they didn't prepare yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. I know she's a writer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're lying. Sorry I feel a little overdressed, but it's pretty chilly in here. So I had this really fashion-forward shirt I was going to show off here because this, this is part fashion, so I covered it up with this uh, kind of like a peacoat. Uh, true story, wore. Max works in San Pedro at the docks. He came straight from there to here. He looks great. Good San- fashion. Good Vanda. sailor fashion. Good yeah. Maritime fashion, I would say. We're going to go out of Catalina. Get <laughs> so- on the boat. How many minutes can we go without we got rockfish? How many minutes, good rockfish season. How many minutes can we go without saying one thing about soccer? Well, let's get into it then. Okay. Uh, I think we covered it. Uh, by the way, when I watched the Oscars, it was quite a difference. <laughs> right, right back to the Oscars. Saturday, I watched UFC and they were in Jacksonville. Uh-huh. It was a packed house there. And I was like, what's going on? And then I saw the Oscars and they were honoring social distancing, even over, beyond what was required. Yeah. But it was all optics, obviously. And uh, well, there we have it. Because but. Florida. They went beyond. So Florida wow. doesn't just sell out places now. They're like, let's put extra people in there. Let's actually they make it a fire like it. danger. It looked like it. Cram them in. Was Ron DeSantis there? No, never mind. Let's not I don't do know. that. But they did that after the game. So we were at, uh, at Bank of California Stadium. And we'll talk about it. Are we going to talk about that first? Or are we going to go MLS weekend? Or we have some soccer. You can go wherever you, you want. want to go talk? Let's talk soccer, though. Okay. Did you see the La Liga race? It's heating up. I'm surprised. I, I really Three points thought, separating the top four. Barcelona was dead and gone. They seemed like they had nothing. They had uh, Frankie de Jong, who I actually really like, but now the more I watch him and the more I read about him, for people that are smarter than myself, I'm like, oh, maybe he's not good. Uh, but it seems like they figured out how to use him a little bit better. And then Messi, uh, I, think, I, I think it might have been your old buddy, uh, Alejandro Moreno, who said, you know, he turns it on in like 10 to 20 minute spurts, which we're used to seeing him be able to do it for a whole game, but he's like, Still, 10 to 20 minutes of Messi is incredible. Antoine Griezmann picked up the scoring load. Uh, this show I watch now just because handed, of the Super that League. That second goal. They're like, here, how did he get played through by a defender on the other team? <laughs> I thought it was great. But look, uh, it was a little sloppy. I, I, the show I watched because of the Super League called El Chiringuito de Jugonas is in Spain. Mm-hmm. And they had Florencio Perez on. So I've uh, started watching that. It's on, I think, Fox and Fox Sports 1 or Fox Sports. Or no, Fox Deportes. 
And I also follow on their Twitter. I was like, handle. there's no way it's on Fox Sports One. Yeah, it was not Fox Sports One. <laughs> it's on it's it's Castilian Spanish. And they had the odds that they were voted in, and it's fifty five percent of the vote said Barcelona is gonna win it. And so I was a little bored last night. I looked at all the schedules. Barcelona has the easiest schedule. They, they still have, have to a play game in hand on Thursday. Atletico though, right? Round thirty five, it's Barcelona Atletico, and then it's Real Madrid Sevilla. So Sevilla Got the second highest number. People really like Sevilla's chances because they're healthy, uh-huh. they're playing well, and their schedule is agreeable. Not as agreeable as Barcelona, but you don't know. It's hard to, to gauge it that way because you could play a team that's in 16th fighting for their life, and you're going to get a better opponent probably, a more desperate opponent than a team that's in 12th nursing a couple injuries. So it's kind of hard. It's not apples to apples. Well, and you, you actually want to be in Barcelona's spot because you want to play your direct competitor so you can just separate yourself. Yeah. It's one thing if Sevilla wins, but if Barca wins too, then what's the point? I would say this. I, I would tend to think if you, if you ask me who I think is going to win, it's going to be Barcelona. And based on where they were three months ago, remember they had that conversation with uh, where there's no fans in the PSG game first leg between Griezmann and Piquet, where it mm-hmm. looked like complete meltdown. For them to come back and win this is massively big time. And no one's more critical of Barcelona than I am, so I will... I will uh, praise them if they pull it off. Even if they don't, to put themselves in this position was pretty impressive. Uh, well, biggest question, we'll move on to MLS. If Barcelona wins, what does Messi do? I think he stays. I feel like he stays. Huh? And it's all connected Super League because Real Madrid, I'm sorry to bring up Super I think Super League still happens. I think they're going to re, re, recalibrate it, and it's still you- going to happen. Because Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Juventus have not said that they are completely out. They're still hanging in there. And the Champions League is going to go on with a reformat. And let me tell you something. Is it a Champions League if you don't have those three teams? They're going to be. What do you mean? They're going to be in that. But what though? if they hold up and they go, no, no, because that you be can't stupid. have a Champions League so they're gonna, those three. So they're going to forego. So they're going to, the three of them against now everyone else that has jumped out is going to forego the money that they could make from the Champions League. They're going to be in it. I agree with you. There's going to be some retooling. It will not be the Super League and it will not be run by those teams. Wouldn't it be called Super League? It'll probably still be called Super League. Super League, so. Maybe, maybe those teams will make money by selling that horrible website to UEFA <laughs> to get Super League going. I just been, I've been fascinated by it. And the UEFA president's going, we might have to punish these guys. I go, really? Might have to? Yeah, and then they go, wow, are you going to go ahead and punish them? And I go, this is Real Madrid and, and Barcelona. These are two of yeah. the three biggest names in football. Manchester United, the other. And then the Premier League, they were talking, should there be punishment for the six that came in there? And there was an Aston, the, the CEO of Aston Villa. I go, yeah, I guess so, but I mean, that'd be I mean, let's not get crazy here. Those are, our big, those are our biggest earners. Those are the clubs that bring in the sponsorships. Those are the clubs that bring in the commercial investment. Those are the clubs that the broadcasters want to see on their air and why they pay exorbitant amounts of money to broadcast the Premier League. So. I heard as long as they say they're sorry and they, they seem very contrite that everything will be okay. It's, such a, it's, it's, it's fascinating, well, but it's messy. and Max, I'll, Not Lionel Messi. Not Lionel Messi. 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 Oh, see, that's what you... Well, Max, what I want to talk about, because this is your big, this is your big uh, platform that you always bring out and try it out because we're, we're two weeks away from it happening. Uh, the Galaxy have six points from six points. Chicharito has five goals in two games. Uh, you are the biggest proponent of we want the Galaxy to be as good as possible. So let's, uh, this is an LAFC show, but let's start with that Galaxy game because we're going to go deeper into the LAFC game. But can we just talk a little bit about, is Chicharito back? He, the thing about all his goals, they were archetype Chicharito goals. Kind of in between the two defenders, finding a little space or getting on the end of a ball. That, that was the actual good goal. Yes. He's at two, but they're scrappy, but that's what he does. He two scores of his, goals. That's all yeah. he does. Two of his five have been high-level Chicharito goals that I think maybe three or four other players in this league could pull off. Three of them were goals that maybe you and I could. Fair enough, but it's still that's his that's his yeah. bread and butter. Well, do you do you believe in that? Like I do, I do buy into it a little bit. I mean, one of my favorite players is Pipo Inzaghi, but that that idea that the goal you poacher. have to be in the right place, so that's a skill being in the right place. To me, though, it is a skill. Is it? It's not recreatable though. Like, is is Chicharito always going to be in the right place when a goalkeeper decides like to do a courtesy dive for no reason? Well, that, that was bad. That was weird. But there's something about how he reads the game. I always think about Dennis Rodman. You know, when he talks about rebounding, he goes, I look at the flight of the ball, I see how it's going to go off the rim, and I, I can anticipate where it's going to bounce. Obviously, you can't really take that in for the goalkeeper, but I think there is that anticipation of knowing where it is, and Chicharito has it. 
and it seems like something minor, but it really is huge. And if it allows you to score five goals in two games, that's very rare. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be the top scorer in MLS, even if he doesn't score any for the next for the month of May. He probably will still be the top scorer probably in MLS. So uh, he's probably going to get name player of the week. I know, and I talked to uh, Julio when. When we played the Galaxy in the playoffs, I go, we need the Galaxy to win. I was like, no, no, no. And then Julio goes, you're kind of right. We need them. I go, yeah. And it could backfire. You could lose it to them. But you want the Galaxy to be competitive. It's not a fun game. You were pointing at Ben, our sound guy. That's not Julio. I was just pointing there because oh, pretending Julio was like there. A, like rhetorical. Ben, thing. the hardest yeah. working man here on the set. But I yep. think that's a I, – I, you don't want to cheer for them, but it, it benefits everyone because now that game's in a couple weeks and you saw the Fox crew. They're, they're, they're licking their chops. Oh, they love it. They love it because they have it. They love it. it. You know what? <laughs> it drives me nuts. I feel like they love it because it allows them to just give out narratives and just like shout into microphones instead of actually like breaking down the game. Because I watched that game. Uh, neither of those teams are good. Like, the Galaxy Bull- included. Yeah, the Galaxy, I don't think. I think they, they may become good. I mean, look, they're under a new coach, and I think Greg Vanny is a good coach, and they're getting better. Um, but the way that the amount of chances that they're giving up, by the way, penalty at the end? I'll be, I'll be completely frank. I didn't watch till the end because okay. I got pressure to watch the Oscars Frankie and Maya, you know, Los, yeah, Los Angeles native, uh, drove into the box. Uh, Fish, Fisher uh, clumsily, and, and Stu goes, I think he's already going down. I'm like, he's, by the way, he's five foot two. So, yeah, he's close to the ground already, Stu. Um, but, no, it was, he, cleared, he cleaned out his legs from behind. Yeah, it's better to pick up penalties if you're six feet two. I guess. You have longer to go down. So, I guess. I did not know that. Um, I think that, but I, I believe that Greg Vanny is really good. He brought in Victor Vasquez, who was instrumental in getting Chicharito involved. They're going to play. Are they going to be? It's going to be tough in the Western Conference. Well, they're going to play Seattle this weekend. I think we'll learn a lot more about the Galaxy this weekend than we have from them playing Inter Miami, who weren't ready. Who were, weren't well, weren't ready, but somehow in the first sixty minutes when they weren't tired, really took it to the Galaxy. Um, and then Red Bulls, who just had their formation weird. Their three center backs were garbage in the first half. They change formation, and then they start taking it to the Galaxy. But then that man, Chicharito, just pops up in the right places. It, goals change games, right? So he, even though they weren't playing well, the fact that he was in the right place at the right time at the right moments uh, really changed the game. But I thought New York was, at least in the second half, was a much, much better team. And I don't think that they're very good either. Maybe in the mix for worse team. I think they'll get better and they'll, they'll well, Cincinnati make some signings. Is, is clearly they got the, the Red Bull money. Cincinnati's clearly the floor. You think? Yeah, I know that they've lost. I know Red Bulls have zero points. But since Minnesota. Five goals. Minnesota's looking pretty bad right now. Yeah. But they'll bounce back. Let's, let's, let's pop to Minnesota. How do you feel about kicking a ball into the stands? What's the big deal? Were, were you outraged? No. What's big? And then I, I, what outrages me is when the other players come in and they start doing a little shoving. If you're really upset with him, Grab him by the arms, like apologize. Yeah. Or maybe punch him in the stomach. I'm just kidding. Or no. <laughs> just go. Ugh. You know what? Get outra- a red card. Go. Ugh. Don't you, do that. You want to know what outrages me is Adrian Heath coming out afterwards oh. and saying that he's not that good of a goalkeeper. After we've all watched him in a high leverage competition in preseason, be a very good goalkeeper. Yes, he made some some silly errors, but that was because they, to your point, forced him to play out of the back. I know you say like, why do we keep doing this? Um, they forced him to play out of the back, and he made some errors. Okay. Uh, but he's obviously a really good goalkeeper. Uh, and Adrian Heath, not the best talent evaluator. I might, <laughs> I might keep that mouth shut. Cause, uh, Ochoa might be the, the next yeah, where's, goalkeeper in line. Where's Ramon Abila? Did he play? Was he in the 18 for that no, match? No, he did not. Oh, weird. That was very weird. Huh. Not available. Gonna for burn your through, so you're going to burn through another uh, high-value uh, South American crazy? striker. I mean, they were, they're in the Western Conference Final. They're on the up and up. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. Those things that you did don't really add up. I, I, they're still a very talented squad. Reynoso is still a fantastic player, and no matter what. But it's like, what, if we just plucked him and they put the rest of the thing out there, they are a bang-on average team at best. Mason Toy scoring goals for Montreal, so he could have been there. I, I, I don't know player, why they jettisoned him. A player that him. should still be in Minnesota, and you wouldn't have been spending, what? What did they spend on Amaria? Like four or five? Another four That's or five crazy. on Abia? That's $10 million down the drain when Mason Toy's... Wow, you're already throwing it down the drain. I mean, I think it's going to be. It's Adrian Heath. He's going to blow it. Yeah, so Minnesota, uh, stock down on Minnesota. Uh, I, uh, the Ochoa, I mean, I, I think if you ask those fans in there, they wouldn't care. They're like, great, a ball. <laughs> yeah. Catch it. I know. You, that's the other thing. You know one of the, whatever fan caught that ball was like, how can, I get, how can I get this out of here? 
Yeah, but it was good. I mean, that's a good talking point. Yeah, to hit it, I appreciate it. He kicked it. it towards the fans, by the way, not at them. Yeah, it's very different than what it's it could have been. And yeah, he didn't ping it go, at boop. them. Kicked it straight up in the air. I would want to say, in an overall comment, the first two weekends of Major League Soccer, and because of the Super League, people were a little disconnected with the European game. There wasn't a lot of great games these last two weeks. Some cup competition, which haven't been great. Then uh, it was a chance for. MLS to, and there was no real American sport going on. You have baseball, which is still just in diapers, really, as, as in the reason just started. But and, uh, and games are five. There hours. wasn't there's the NFL drafts this week, so there's not a lot of competition. Not that you're getting a crossover, but the games came in. You had what about hockey. What's hockey? Oh, stop it. <laughs> Someone's going to drop the gloves with you, Max. Yes, yes. You, you, uh, we're going to have a hockey reference in every single episode, and you're going you're gonna to poo poo it. And someone's gonna someone's gonna fight you, you know. But just those Canadians can only be so so nice for so long. I know, and I love Canada. I want to make that abundantly clear. But um, but after point. the game, after by the way, at the LAFC game afterwards, I was like, "What's going on at the Coliseum? The rugby game? The uh, the LA Guiltinis were playing." I almost slipped in there and watched it. What are they called? The Guiltinis. Long what does that story. Mean? Well, the owner is yeah, named yeah. Please Adam make it. Gilchrist. Give me the short. It's please give me the shorter version name, of the long story. And then he has names with drinks, and there's like a martini glass. It's a terrible name. And then actually, I'm more excited because I'm, I'm, I've played rugby for a long time. I'd like to go and see it, but that name almost turns me off to wanting to go. Yeah, Guiltini's is a horrible name. So I almost went in there, but the costume was very active. Okay, that's what was going on. As I was going home and I'm hearing all this stuff happening in other MLS games, I go, this is amazing. Everything was hitting it. You had controversy. You had incredible goals. Ezequiel Barco scoring mm. uh, an early goal yep. season candidate. You had um, big stars coming up. Obviously, Chicharito. Gonzalo Higuain, who to me, I was like, man, he looks out of shape. He comes in and scores a goal, and then his brother does. That's a great story. Austin FC. How does his brother look so much fitter than him? And is three Federico. years older. Federico looks fitter than most of the players on that team, but he's also three years older than his brother. He's, yeah. Well, he, Gonzalo doesn't have to be as fit. I, I suppose. He only so, has to run, you know, 10-yard bursts, I guess. I was surprised with that, and there's, there was just every game had something. I mean, obviously, the, there were some, some bad games. But you hope that you have these moments between goals and the big name players. The only thing, LAFC Seattle, which we will talk about, because the players weren't there, it was the only thing kind of really missing. But this is really good. I am convinced whether it's 100, whether it's 1,000, whether it's 5,000, I think MLS gained some new fans this week because people are going, wow, this is pretty good. I'm entertained. I, I'm engaged. It's a high-scoring league. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of games where goals are in a premium. I was watching the Carabao Cup. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like you get maybe a chance here and – just the openness and that kind of game, it's, uh, it's, it's very people love goals. People love scoring. Yeah. The excitement of these games in the first two weeks as we're opening up more and more, these games are going to get even better, right? More fan, I think more fans is what's going to raise that, that level. Uh, Kate Cow was, am was yes. amazing. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really good. The young and, players. And who's the other young? Uh, Gianluca Busio. Busio. 18-year-old. So the young players, and I think one of the criticisms, is if, if it is a criticism, is that we have these good young players like Brendan Aronson and Brian Reynolds, and they sell them right away. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we need these young players. But it's it immediately replenished with some new young players. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign that MLS and their academies are doing really well. And I think it's going to be replenished with the next one. Maybe it's an LAFC guy. So that, that uh, apparatus is working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the young guys are scoring. And, and so are, to your point about uh, Gonzalo Higuain, uh, so are the name, the name brand DPs. Higuain scores. Nani has a, has a nice goal. So... We're getting that good mix. We don't want to, I, you know, the second that somebody signs someone 30 years or older that's a name player, it's retirement league, right? But they're actually contributing and contributing well. You need the good mix. I like the good mix. Alexander Pato, did he get injured again? Is that why he didn't play? Yeah, he's injured again. Of course he is. He walked, yeah, off, he walked off the bus and probably was injured. <laughs> How does that? Could have told you. Could have told you that I know, was you could have. Uh, so, yeah, it's a pretty good, th I'm, I'm thinking if we covered everything and, uh, yeah, let's go it's to It's a big league. There's 27 teams. It's hard to cover, yeah. but I think you have to be happy uh, about the progress that's being made. There's back in the day on opening couple weekends, there's like three things. I got to see this and that's about it. Now you're like, "Okay, no, I got I want to check this thing." Yeah, I can watch on. I can watch mid-table teams play because it's still exciting and there's still a couple of interesting players, usually young players that are on each team. Um, but yeah, to your point, there's 27 teams. We can't we can't cover all of it. If you want that show, which I know people don't because they complain to us Start talking LAFC. Uh, watch, watch Extra Time. It's a great yeah. show. Yeah. So, it is a great show to, to break down the whole league. So let's, let's do what the people want. 
See, this is just a tease to get you to this point yes. to bump up our listening numbers. Okay, let's talk LAFC. LAFC. Let's talk LAFC. Uh, one one with the Sounders. I almost missed that opening goal because it happened so fast. Two minutes. It was wonderful. Eduardo Tuesta with the free kick under the wall. And the incredible thing there is this phenomenon now where they have a guy lying down and Sounders didn't do that. So, and especially where that ball was, it was literally inches from the 18. The hardest thing to do is to get the ball up and over the wall. So, so that's why, why are you jumping? Yeah. No, but why are you even jumping? It, it's not even that you had to have a guy back there. I'm not huge on putting a guy back there because I think that teams are going to now start to game that because essentially you put a guy back there, you're saying it's one last guy to mark and teams can work around you know, getting around the wall and, and doing something where that guy's all of a sudden trying to pop up and figure out where he's supposed to go. But in that situation, from 19 yards out, there is no reason to jump. There really was no reason And everyone to jump. jumped. And everyone jumped. <laughs> Just slipped in underneath. And I, I don't know if that was a miscommunication, because Stefan Fry immediately looked upset, like, why did you jump? I, would have t- I told you guys, don't, don't jump. And he's, he's basically the captain of that team, especially when, when guys like Ladero aren't in the team. So I'm very surprised that they, they did. Um, but Atuesta must have seen or heard something because he was, he knew exactly what he was going to do and like, just like red carpet, speaking yeah, of and, Oscars, just rolled it on out there. And then he celebrated, put the ball under his shirt, suggesting there's a new, it's one of my uh, favorite celebrations. there's a little baby Atuesta on the way. Yeah. The team celebrated Congrats with to him. It. First five minutes, LAFC just smothered them. I was like, this is amazing. And Seattle didn't touch the ball. They're mm-hmm. pinging it around. And again, no Carlos Vela, no Diego Rossi. We hope. I saw Diego Ross in the elevator. He was walking around. He looks good. I don't know the status. Obviously, LFC is going to be very careful. It's a long season. Mm-hmm. It's a big stretch coming up here, so you'd and, like to see them. We'll and, get and into the and schedule. a big rival in two weeks. The big rival. And then a Seattle again after that. So this is a, May is going to be mm-hmm. uh, an exciting month for the club. But uh, we talked about the depth, and these guys came in, and there were some connections missed in the final third. and. Some crosses, which there needs to be work on hitting the back of Seattle defenders. But the, the confidence that they exuded and some guys playing out of position. But clearly the fact that you had enough players without not just Vela and Rossi, but um, Tristan Blackman, uh, that they could, they could still function. And this is going to be a strength for LAFC mm-hmm. moving forward. You know, guys making their debuts. Mm-hmm. Cal Jennings. I just Cal love Jennings. Cal Jennings. I love Cal Jennings. Not just because I interviewed him on I, Instagram. He was, a, Cal. he was a very nice. He was very nice and very personable. Uh, just a just a fun guy. Um, probably probably a good guy to be around. Marco Farfan makes his debut. Marco looked Farfan. good. Looked he looked very good. Hey, look, I had forgotten that he that they that he was going to play because I was like, okay, Tristan's out. We know that Kim isn't quite ready. And I was like, who's going to play right back? And then Marco's in there. I'm like, oh, of course. Marco can play left or right. Like, they did their business He's, I early, forgot he was, and it was great. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice bonus. No one has a lot of left footers. For a guy that was basically kind of thrown into the deep end against Raul Ruiz Diaz, um, I think he played very well. It, towards, uh, Seattle started to get a headway a little bit as they started to get um, some, some traction with Will Bruin holding the ball and then getting their, their wing backs to run off. So, Marco wasn't sure if he was coming or going in that instance. You got either you close down or you don't. Uh, but I thought he, he still did very well and he fought through it. Um, tough spot to be in. Actually, he was, that was, I might as well go into it. That was one of my takeaways was the new, new guy did really well. I thought Marco Farfan did really well and basically kind of put it out there. Like there's competition now for all these spots. Cause I think you and I both agree. Chiqui Palacios has been okay, but just okay. Just okay. I know. Kind of, I thought it was great in the Champions League, but the first two weeks, I'm like, and the fullback uh, contingency with, with Chiki, Farfan, Kim Mung Hwan, when we, we get to see him, he's obviously not 100%. And Tristan. Tristan Blackman, Latif played. <laughs> and Latif, <laughs> Latif played ending a up, right rounding out the game. Not many people can say they can have four really good right backs, and we, we still think highly of all of them, but Farfan is a guy the club identified. They brought him in, and he looked good there. There's a couple times they got over him. But to be expected, mm-hmm. and uh, he was competitive, and by and large, Rui Diaz was quelled in this game. So uh, it's that's a good development. That's something you, you can see. Cal Jennings as well. I mean, even then, he had his head on one of those balls that came across. I mean, he was an active participant. Mm-hmm. I would have takeaway too. I would have liked to see Cal a little bit quicker because my other takeaway was we were playing with by necessity. Way too many midfielders in the attack, and well, Sifu was up there. Sifu, see, that's that's going to segue into the third one, but the. 
late in the game, we were taking it to Seattle. Seattle seemed like they were like, you know, let's just maybe get a point out of this, which I think is disappointing for them. When you look at the lineups and say, Carlos Vela not in the 18, Diego Rossi not in the 18. Yes, we're missing Ladero, but just, just Ladero after we trounced Minnesota, they have to think that they should have been able to, to get all three points. And there's not very many instances where you're going to come to Van California Stadium and think, okay, today's a three-point day, and they, did, they only managed one. Uh, but late in the game, there were so many times when midfielders had space and time, and they're looking up, and there's other midfielders ahead of them wondering, <laughs> hey, could you pass it to my feet right in front here? It's like, no, get the windows, go run the channels, go, go beyond the defense. Um, and then within that was a point that you brought up. And, oh, Danny Masovsky, we should say also. Danny was out also, was out. yeah. Yeah, this was by necessity. This is, not a, this is not really a criticism of them, per se. It's like, you're a midfielder. not used to doing this. Um, but this is one thing that, that you like to point out, and I hadn't noticed it as much until you did. Crosses were bad. Yeah, because I thought this was a game where they'd get in pos- possession, position to cross the ball, and they mm-hmm. did. Yeah. But the crosses just The crosses were there. bad. Yeah, and we're not even, and this is not just crosses like in the air from wide, wide positions. The they would get into positions where they were just inside the 18, and hit the ball alone on the ground, and instead, I, there was one where uh, Mahalo, who I think had a pretty good game, but there was one where he got in there, and it was like just ripe to hit it to the far post on the ground, hit it hard, something's going to happen, and he flubbed it, and it flipped over the goal. I was like, oh, that's a corner at least. No, no, it was hit so poorly that it looked like it deflected and went over, and that was kind of the way it went um, for a lot of the game for crosses. I was, yeah, and I was looking for them. I go, let's get crosses because I was anticipating a game where they would get opportunities in those positions. They did. And it, 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 didn't, it didn't materialize. So uh, something Jay- to work Jason's on. Jason's in my ear saying that the, the guy I pointed out with the man Jean to watch Paolo, was not your good. guy. That's yeah, your guy. Jason, don't. Non-factor. This is, Subbed this, late. You're, you're in the control room. Don't make me look bad by, by reminding me that I made a bad pick for that. That's not a bad shout. Yeah. A player, a, a player to not watch. Thank you, that Jason. Doesn't mean, that's, that's, that's not a good segment. Uh, who's your player not to watch? Who's your player not to watch? Who's the guy that's going to suck today? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I got a couple options for you. Last, last takeaway for me, and I know fans love to talk about this because they love formations. I don't know why. Look, I've said this, and this, someone reminded me of this. Al Hopkins on Twitter was like, you, you said once that formations are just starting points. And I was like, I said that after someone very much smarter than me told me that. I think it might have been Will Coons. Um, but they are just starting points. But it was interesting to see, um, by necessity again, uh, a little bit of a diamond formation at times. Sifu was either, depending on where he picked up his spot in the press, he was either in that line for 4-3-3 as a kind of a false nine-ish, or there were times where literally we had like a midfield diamond. I haven't seen, LFC really hasn't done much of that. Um, again, it was by necessity, so I don't know if we'll see much more of it. Uh, but it was an interesting little wrinkle, something that if somebody wants to rewatch the game, uh, it'd be something fun to to check out all your takeaways are very good and i think i would echo each of them i would add one is that Corey baird plays until his tank is empty yeah that was pretty impressive he's running and running and running for a guy that we thought might not get to play he was carrying a little bit of a knock too yeah that's where you get a little panic mode you can't miss that many guys no i imagine bryce duke would probably come in and he came on and you know bryce is uh, you know, a still a young player, still playing out of position, not really in a situation where he could excel. He may need to kind of find those minutes up there because, as we see, we, we have a, a glut of midfielders, mm-hmm. good midfielders, that that's going to make it a tough uh, group to crack. But, um, yeah, it's, everyone's effort was, was good. I think Bob even mentioned that afterwards about the effort, about the commitment. It was breaking down in the final third. Those final passes, it's another takeaway I've got to be better because a lot of, there were so many times where they did all the heavy lifting and you just need a, a small little touch across the back of the 18 and they, it didn't happen. And it was like a little detail. And the LAC play at such a pace, and we've always said it since day one, it goes, those decisions where you have to think about them before the ball comes to you, where am I going to go with it? And I think there was a little disconnect there. Yeah. Uh, and that's something, it, because it's challenging to play for LAFC and do that style. And it's easy for me to say because I can't think about it or the, the next pass before I've received the pass, mm-hmm. th- there was a little breakdown there. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, tie, it's a watch mechanism, right? Everything's all timed because the speed of play, you want, it, you want to be on the edge where you're almost offside, where you're already on the move because if you're already on the move and that ball comes at the right pace and at the right angle, there's no way that defender is going to get back into position and then you're just behind the defense and you can wreak havoc from there. And to your point, they weren't, they were just a little bit off. And, Look, that's to be expected. I, I, I do echo Bob's sen- sentiments that 
this team, for all the players that were out, were, was very focused, very yes. difficult to play against. Against a good, I think the Seattle team's pretty good. Um, they, they may not reach the heights that they did when they had Jordan Morris and all their guys healthy, but they're still pretty good. So, you know, Brian Schmetzer knows, how, knows his team and knows how to get them into good areas, but LAFC was just breaking them down at times. They were playing yeah. through, like, you, it was a track meet the, to start the game, um, and then it kind of reshuffled at half. It got to 1-1, and generally you would think that maybe Seattle's going to go on to win that game because they do have more, let's, let's just face it, they had more quality, you know, finishers and game changers on the pitch at that point, but LAFC responded and, and, and went right back at them. They just couldn't find that last little bit. We were, we were sounding a little critical because I didn't mean to do that. I thought this was a very positive effort. This could have been a dud yeah. because of the missing players, especially at the beginning of the season because you've been training with this core group and all of a sudden mm-hmm. they're not there. I mean, they were training with Rossi and Vela the whole time. That's, mm-hmm. they, this was uh, a contingency that I don't think Bob would have ever anticipated they would have this many missing players and he had to put an 11. They put a good 11 that was playing. I, loved, I thought there was a, a physical element that Jesus Murillo, and I'm going to tell you this, uh, he's guy. going to become one of the fan favorites very quickly. We mm-hmm. always have Vela and Latif. I think Murillo, because he's, he has filled a void that was there of that everyone wants the identity. Of this. They want this club to be tough. They want this club to push back. They want this club to you know, be uncompromising, and he provides all of that. Yeah, you know who doesn't love that guy? Will Bruin. Had a rough day. <laughs> Both of them just going, going at it. I love a striker. I mean, Will Bruin's a, a tough kind of rugged striker, um, but man, he was in the referee's ear from like minute one. He's like, "That guy's pushing me." I'm like, "Come on, that's it's a that's your sport. that's your game." You guys are both going at it. I get it. You're trying to. It's a little gamesmanship, but he was a little he was a little over the top with his uh, remonstrations of the guy's pushing me. Mario okay. took that bad knock too, where you could hear it upstairs, where the uh, the substitute the name I, escaped double I thought dare. His shin guard was broken in half and went, possibly bah! worse. I was like. That sounds bad. So he got up and he finished. He's a t- he's just a solid citizen. A young academy kid thinking he's gonna make a name by dude. Don't do that. Yeah, that was. You stick your foot in there knowing that something possibly bad could happen yeah. in that moment. And I get it. He wants then, to make an impact. You know what's funny is Latif later got a yellow card. Um, on on what's it's double. It's not it's, double. It's not dare. double there. I made yeah. a joke. It's double. I forgot. Yeah, we were making number forty five. We but Latif had a moment to to basically where you you foul in transition because he's kind of ahead. And it was very light, and I was like, "Latif, he just he just ran your boy. Yeah. I mean, get get some get your money's worth." So I think we covered the the uh, the keys. A quick look at May because mm-hmm. we've wrapped up the April schedule, two games. Yep. Um, May the first, LAFC at Houston, which will be off, there. Which one ten football two thirty local. Yeah, one ten football will be there. Uh, I'm hoping for some good weather. If you, if anybody knows uh, Houston weather, it can rain at the drop of a hat. So that's going to be tricky, and Houston is a legit rival. LAFC's had some, some big games with them, U.S. Open Cup in 2018. The, the rain game in L.A., which rain you won't game. forget. They were obviously the team that we, we beat in order to raise the supporter shield that, that's that, right. that that's night. Right. So. so there's history. Mm-hmm. May 8th, Galaxy, LAFC. Never heard of them. Never. It's, uh, what do you think about the timing of it for it to be the fourth game of the year? I think I'd rather a couple of weeks down, although with the way the Galaxy are playing, I welcome it now because it's yeah, going to be a big event. Yeah, four seems a little quick, but. I, look, give or take, w- within like the six, six to eight week mark. Yeah, I would. I love getting a, a rival out there. Plus, we're gonna play them three times anyway, so Correct. you gotta get. Correct. You, you gotta, gotta get, get in. in. Normally, it'd be twice, but they're gonna play three look, times. Thank, thank God it's not the first or second week, so because MLS does have a tendency to do, uh, you know, rivalry week whenever they feel fit. May sixteenth, Seattle LAFC, yep. up at their place. I see, I don't love that. We, it seems like. That's one thing MLS does in our schedule. They're like, hey, you're going to play Seattle? Why don't you just play them two times in, in, within a couple weeks? Why? <laughs> that always happens. Huh? Always happens. Remember we had the one where we went back-to-back? Back-to-back. That was the 2019. Yeah. And the one game was a 4-1, and the second game was a boring, just kind of drag-out wrestle fest. The Christian Ramirez missed, right? That was the one where he missed right in front. I try to forget about okay. that. And then May 22nd, a game very near and dear to me, LAFC at home against Colorado. It's our first broadcast game. Finally. First broadcast. More details on that coming out. Do you feel fit? Are you ready to go? Yes, I do. I've been calling a lot of uh, Libertadores games. Yeah, Max Fit. Max Fit sounds cool. You got Max get, Fit? Max Fit. Ready to rock. Are you ready, Max Fit? Let's go. That's me as a trainer. <laughs> you have been calling Libertadores games, so you should be ready. Yes, my voice. The, the yay yes. is good. Oh, yeah, you had a very good one. What, what game was that? Libertadores? Yeah, last week. You had a very oh, long. 
How, how do you, how, let me ask you this. We'll round out the segment with this. How do you know when to end the yes? Uh, that's a great question. I know it's, it, it, it has to, it's is it a timing thing? Is it the pictures that you're yeah. seeing? Like when the guy's done celebrating, you you're done? It. You have that inner clock too. Okay. So you do it. And I shorten it and is I it, just want to, I just lower it. Are you ever in your head and you're like, we should probably end it, but your voice is still going. You're like, oh, we're doing yeah, this. Just keep going. Yes. Because the yes was a product of not having a long, long goal. I didn't want to go go over. I did it a little bit self-indulgent, self-indulgent for me. So I did yes. Sweet. Kind of just, it's, it's a marker that there was a goal. Mm -hmm. And then I go, I think it was the game with Cerro Porteño, mm -hmm. the uh, Paraguayan um, uh, Neymar. Is it true that Cristiano Ronaldo, who when he scores a goal, says, see you, who basically is like saying yes. Did he yeah. steal that from you? How dare he? I think he might have. Daniel Bryan at WWE goes, yes, yes. My yes call was before that too, so I don't know. Bring it, Bryan. Bring it. Everyone wants to retired? Taste. Why do I know these things? I don't know. I don't know. Yes, he, he had a lot of concussion issues. All right, I think you, he still worked. So that's it. Do you, um, do you think we did, we did good work here? I know we're, try, we're trying for a player. We're waiting for yeah, we, we, We're completely transparent. We're not lying. We're going to. Yeah, we can. We are. We're going to get somebody here. We're, we're just working with the club to talk about it. But uh, they didn't train last Monday. We're going to yeah. train here. We're, we'll, we will hear you. So Jason, you'll find out when we Jason do. is way too professional for us. He's like, don't, don't do that. And I'm like, why not? What do you say? I'll, okay, yeah, well. <laughs> Unless we had three to. seconds their time, but Max and I put a lot of effort and wait around for this. So, Jason, if that we, we like happen, to just pull the curtain back. If that doesn't happen, we're gonna do what like uh, Conan O'Brien did, and we'll have Vela, and we'll have them. <laughs> we'll have one of us pretending to be we Carlos. Should. <laughs> we Robert should. Smigel. Hey, it was a great game last <laughs> week. I just want to play. <laughs> that would be amazing. That is exactly what Vela sounds like. Yes, I know, but that's what Robert Smigel okay. sounds like. So I think we covered a lot of ground. We're gonna take a quick pause here, and you'll see when we. A very, very, very brief Quick pause, pause, three seconds. And we'll get back into the LAFC fabric with a player to be announced very shortly. And as promised, yes, we deliver here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince pod. Marco Farfan joining us here from the Performance Center. Marco, I, I, I guess the right question to ask, your first appearance for LAFC, uh, what do you take away with that? What would you share with your friends about playing for LAFC at Bank of California Stadium for the first time. Uh, I talk about the fans and, and the stadium. Uh, the quality of the stadium is, is another level, being able to play in it and being at home instead of playing away in that stadium. And in front of the 3252, it was, it was great. I mean, the fan, the, pa the passion, um, you don't see that uh, around the league. You don't see a lot of that. So I think that uh, that'd be the main takeaway that I, I tell my friends about. Marco, when, when you came to the team, uh, we were told by John Thornton that you were a player that could play on either side of the field. Obviously, you're left-footed, uh, but you played right back in this game. Um, I'm going to give you a compliment here. I totally forgot that you were left-footed um, <laughs> because of the way you played and how natural you felt. But how does it – I think Bob's system caters a little bit to maybe sometimes having someone that, that can pass with their left foot really well from right back. How did you feel in the system? I know they throw a lot at you. How did you feel in, at right back? Yeah, I felt good going into this game. I was very confident. The coaching staff and all the teammates here have, have made me feel at home and have been helping me try to learn the system and the style of the play. Um, so I felt pretty confident, pretty comfortable going in as a right back. There was obviously some moments that you could tell, some mistakes, but, you know, it's, it's a learning process and there's still some details to get better at. But, yeah, I mean, him, me being able to come inside, then go out, overlap, you know, I felt comfortable. I felt comfortable. Yeah, does it, it gives you the being left-footed when you do come inside, you kind of have better passing angles, right? And then because you're left-footed, you can just use that natural foot. Is that kind of how you felt? Exactly, yeah. When, anytime that I was able to cut in, it's much more comfortable than when you're on the left side cutting in onto your right foot and trying to make a, a hard pass further than, than you're used to. Right, and they don't, they don't ask you to just, you know, it's a little different than being asked to just run down the line, get to the, get to the goal line and cross it, right? Exactly. It's, it's much more free-flowing. <laughs> oh, good questions, Vince. I mean, that's what they pay me for. Wow, excellent. I'm going <laughs> to ask you a not-so-great question because I'm intrigued with the old left-footed. I am right-handed, left-footed, and left-footers generally are a, a rarity. So, I mean, what, is, what are your experiences being left-footed? How have, have coaches in the past used that 
whereas you can also comfortable on the right side. But also knowing that being a le- like being a left ha- left arm pitcher in baseball, it, they're a rarity. And how do you best use that? Um, yeah, you know, like like Vince said, being able to play on both sides, and especially in this system and Bob's system, being able to come inside and use both feet, um, I think that that's a that's a pretty big plus. So, yeah, I mean, to answer that question, I'd say just being able to play on both sides and be able to use both feet whenever I'm on either side is is what I could use as an advantage. You talked about free flowing. I want to ask you about the first thirty minutes of that match. It looked like a track meet uh, to be to get your first start for this team and and be dropped into a, a match of that intensity. What what was that like? Yeah, I told the guys after the game that I had a I had, I had trouble getting my second win, especially you know being in a high intensity game like that, pressing back and forth and trying to keep and uh, keep and maintain that intensity throughout the whole game. It, it was pretty hard. Um, but after those first 20 minutes, being able to get my second win, felt much more confident. And, uh, uh, I'd say much more comfortable um, and composed than having to, you know, stay up with that pace. Obviously, a lot of injured players or unavailable players uh, more accurately here for LAFC in this weekend. And we look at the spirit of those guys that get these opportunities. And Bob Bradley says, if you work hard, you're going to get these opportunities. And you got it here in the second week of the season. What, what is it? Do you have those conversations? Obviously, Cal Jennings made his LAFC debut. Bryce comes in. Uh, he, has, he wasn't used a lot in the back end of the season. About that group of players that aren't going to be in that featured 11, but have to stay sharp for opportunities like this. Is there, is there a conversation you guys have on, or with the coaches on how to be ready for any moment? I think the coaches just – there's not really a, a conversation that we have with specific players. I just think the coaches uh, hold everybody accountable. Um, and everyone in the locker room holds each other accountable. So whenever we have training sessions, we have to compete and know that we're fighting for a starting job. Um, and it's a, it's a healthy competition because it helps the team. It keeps everyone that does start on their toes to keep getting better. It keeps those that want to start to, to compete and try to win that spot. So when it comes comes down to the game and someone's name is called, players are ready and they're expected to perform and already know the system and not feel out of place. Marco, as I'm sure you knew throughout the week, I'm sure Bob reminded you, I know he talked to you guys in the locker room after that first game. It's a budding rivalry here between LAFC and the Seattle Sounders. But obviously where you came from, uh, it, it it's definitely a, not even a budding rivalry. It's full-blown. <laughs> Look, you can see his uh, eyes light up. He's like, I know. Yeah, <laughs> tell, me, tell, me, tell me a little bit about as a, as a former Timber um, coming into the, the rivalry as an LFC player. What do you, is there any similarities and differences? What, what is it like uh, now being on the LFC side, side playing against Seattle? Yeah, it's very similar. Um, you know, talking to the guys over here and seeing the games throughout the, the league and this past couple of years, I saw the rivalry form within LAFC and in Seattle, especially when it came down to playoffs. Um, so when I was in Portland, it was obviously a big rivalry. We knew that that game needed to be won for, the, for bragging rights, for the club, for the fans. And now being on this side with LAFC, I could see that as well. It, games get very chippy, and you want to prove a point and prove that you're the better team, and you know have those bragging rights. Uh, Marco, what's it? What is the scene like in Portland? We know about the Timbers, but you coming through as a young player, uh, what's the competition like there? Is it? Do you see a good level where, much like many other academies, that area is producing good young players like yourself? Yeah, you know, I've, I've seen it grow. Um, grow. When I first started. Um, I didn't know so much about it. Um, my first year, we made it all the way to playoffs. And then each year, there's like more and more players coming in and trying out. And as soon as I signed with the first team, I saw a lot more talent come in. And it was just like natural talent. It wasn't, it wasn't really things that you could teach. It's just talent. And then you teach them the basics. You t- teach them the system to then be able to have them be able to adapt. Um, you know, I think it's still growing. I think it's still growing. You see academies like Dallas. Uh, Dallas is a really big academy that you see a lot of home runs come out of. So now that you have your first uh, appearance with LFC under your belt, um, uh, I know you guys, uh, things are opening up a little bit more. People are getting vaccinated. Uh, how much more do you feel a part of LA? 
Um, have you had a chance to uh, maybe find some places that you enjoy in L.A.? What, tell us a little bit about, like, what you've been doing outside the, the training pitch and outside the field. Yeah, so I've gone out to eat a couple of times with some of the guys, uh, Sifu, Pancho, um, Cheeky, and uh, Moody. You know, just a, lot, a couple of the guys, you'd go out, find something to eat. They'll show me around. Um, when I first got here, I was in Old Town or downtown Pasadena. Mm-hmm. So I was able to walk around and check that that area out, and I really liked it. It's it's very quiet, very uh, it's like a suburb. And um, I've I went to Santa Monica. I've gone to to Downey, Glendale. So you know I've just been going out and trying to uh, get to know some of these places. Um, I went to a taco stand, which I was really looking forward to because you don't really see much of those in Portland. So I went to a taco. To, Which, what, what, what stand? Do you remember the you remember the name of it? Uh, I think it was the Twenty Sixth Avenue. It was just like one street, and then there's like taco stands right there. So, what what's I don't the, know what's the, the Marco Farfan of- order? Two, dos tacos al pastor. Yes, and dos de asada with everything on it, and then some chile. What about some tripa? Tripa. Or some birria. Well. Uh, my oh birria birria was. Yeah, birria was good. They didn't have birria there, but mm-hmm. Marco, um, I, yeah. I I love tacos. Uh, but my guy here, Max Bredos, is like king of the taco trucks. So when we finally do get to to take our masks off and do that, you gotta you gotta roll with with Max Bredos and and hit some taco trucks because that's that's his jam. He'll yeah. he'll take oh, it all yeah, the places. I need, I need him to show me around then, if all that's right. the case. <laughs> oh, why, why, why do you need me to show me around? Apparently, Sifu is the L.A. Uh, travel guide now. I remember when he arrived, and he was, and now he's showing people around. Is he like giving you like over here? You see Old Town Pasadena, and there, there is the Porto's Bakery. Is it? Is it something? What? What is that like? No, no. So he told me that when he first got here, he would not really go out much because of the pandemic, and now this year, you know, he hasn't been going out as much. But when we do go out, it's with him. So we're both getting to know these places. So I think that's kind of, kind of a fun part. So we get to explore and not really know what to expect. And your, your Spanish has got to be pretty good. Is his, how's his English coming along? He told me he was going to give it, he was going to learn a little bit by bit by bit as he was here in LA. Yeah. Yeah. We try to get him to speak uh, English. Um, we, I know that he's been taking some English classes. Sometimes he go out and says he has to rush home to take some classes. So I think that's good for him. <laughs> that's great. great. It's fantastic. Yeah, I remember. I remember when he first came. He was a little shy, but it was like you said. You guys couldn't really do much. There was a pandemic, so I'm I'm glad to hear that you guys are getting getting to branch out a little bit more. Um, I do remember that when we had you on media day, we asked you some superlatives. You didn't know very many of your teammates at the time, uh, so I want to ask you this now that you know him a little bit better. There was one question you couldn't answer: Who is the guy that is always late? Who is it? <laughs> Uh, I don't know about late, but I'd say the, the guy that's always the last one to walk into a locker room is cheeky. <laughs> Left footers. It's cause it's cause he's busy chatting with everyone. He loves like, he loves chopping it up. Right. Yeah. He's, he's very outgoing, especially when we're out on the field and, and doing some rondos. He, anytime he needs to go in the middle, he's, he always has something to say, not to go into the middle. <laughs> I love, I love cheeky. When, when cheeky first came, he, he played uh, FIFA with our with our FIFA player Remy Martin, um, mm-hmm. and he was speaking English. And then he sat down with me. I go, so do you want to do the interview in English? He goes, no, I don't speak English. I was like, you were just out there doing perfect English. Yeah, exactly. It's like that. Like some sometimes we we're speaking Spanish, trying to speak English, and then out of nowhere, Sifu or Moody speak in English. And we're like, what? Like you understand this? Why, why aren't you speaking more? <laughs> Love it. How's your cult? I mean, you're getting a cultural uh, uh, education on Colombia. Ecuador, Uruguay, because of your teammates, have you feel you're a little more worldly and cosmopolitan after spending some time here with LAFC? Yeah, mate yet? You doing the mate? Are you drinking mate? Are they? Did they get you to drink mate yet? Or were you- nah, I don't. I don't drink mate. <laughs> I've tasted it though. Um, so back in Portland, uh, the locker room is also diverse. You have Colombians, Argentinians, um, uh, guys from Peru, Costa Rica. So seeing that type of culture and then coming over here, having Colombians and and guys from all over the country is Uruguayans. So I think that's helped me. But seeing that culture, it's nice. You know, back in Portland, I tried mate, but, you know, it wasn't really my thing. I'd rather just have a warm tea. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not much of a, of a mate drinker. <laughs> 
I, I love just a warm tea. Yeah, what is your go-to <laughs> tea? Green tea. Green tea. Okay. Good choice. Yeah. yeah. It's been great. Yeah, Marco, Marco we, we'd, we'd have we, you we're... on the, for the whole podcast if we could because you were great. We, we need to get you in here sometime. We see how comfortable we are when we finally can uh, can break out of our shell and, and not have to worry about things. You need to come by the, the uh, fan cave here at 110. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to. And we have this media training. He's got it. He's already ready to rock. Good answers to some not so great questions. So we appreciate you, Marco. And we'll do this again soon. And, and we look forward to for appearance number two. I know it's going to be a busy month coming into May. With another Seattle game, an LA Galaxy game, you got to be excited about what lies ahead. As the season, st- we finally got some games under our belt. Oh, for sure. I'm especially looking forward to this Galaxy game. Oh, yeah. good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Marco. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for having me. That was wonderful. He's a great dude. Yes. Uh, you can't see it because we had it on on a call. We could see him, but he dresses, dressed to impress. Ready to rock the? He's gonna he's gonna fit in very nicely here in Los Angeles, especially with Sifu showing him around. Yeah, well, you, you, that's pretty. That's actually really. <laughs> that's funny. the. That's what I loved about it because you know Sifu when we first arrived, he was like he like he said he goes I I stayed home I wasn't so that for these guys to help each other get out and explore and get comfortable, that's big for a variety of reasons. In particular, the game the game situation because you're comfortable on your day-to-day, you're going to be comfortable in games. Do you think you and I could get in, into that click? Like me, you, roll with Poncho, Sifu, and Marco sometime? <laughs> Marco would let us in. He seems like a nice guy. All three of those guys and love then us. They, they'd All be like, those guys love us. They'd be like, can you guys, you old guys, bug off. I guess we're going to put a bow on another Inside LAFC. I mean, we can't top that Marco interview, so we might as well. Yeah, we'll be again here next week. And again, a busy May. So uh, if you have questions for us, let us know. We'll, we'll make it interactive as well. We're here to serve you. We really appreciate the support. Uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe to everywhere you find us on 110 it, Football. Inside and LAFC, 110 Football, now on the LAFC YouTube channel, so check it out there. Um, the post games? Post games, yeah. And we'll be in Houston. Virtual, virtual tailgate. tailgate. On the road, road show, like road, college game day. Road trip, virtual tailgate. Pray for us. No rain in Houston. All right. Uh, and, and we'll also say, like, we know some fans are going to be out there. We know we're going to have re- traveling LAFC fans. So yeah, that's going to be very If you are cool going to be in Houston. Drop a line. Hit me up on Twitter. And remember what the Gatlin brothers said about Houston. Houston means that I'm one step closer to you. The country music will show us out. Have a great day, everyone. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye.